Hey, that's Bandu here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're going to continue from where we left off with the master study. Before I proceed with the analysis, I have a life update I want to share. It's about me receiving a full scholarship to pursue graduate studies at Savannah College of Art and Design, Atlanta. I'm really excited because I want to become a teacher in the future. I will go more into details about what this means for my YouTube channel at the end of the tutorial, so please stay with me till the end. And with that, let's start at looking at the reference scene we'll be making today. What did you notice? If we look at it closely, we can observe that these icons are actually arranged in rings scaling down at intervals. And secondly, there are only four patterns to how these icons are arranged. A square, a pair, a diamond, a rectangle. Now that we understand how everything works, let's begin this tutorial. We will first learn about the design workflow in Adobe Illustrator. You can start by designing all your icons. So I counted there's about 18 of them. And I will build my icons or symbols uh, at 200 pixel in height so I can make them all consistent. And once you make all your icons, what you want to do is open up your symbol panel and click and drag one of your graphic and drop it in there. This allows you to create a graphic. You, you don't have to rename it. I'm going to click OK. And by doing so, I can select other symbols, which I already made over here. And I can just go over here with a few clicks. I can replace it with the, the new symbol that I just created. And if I want to make changes to these symbols, I can just double click on the symbol that I created. I'm going to select this shape and then I'm going to click on the color wheel. And I'm just going to select random, click on randomly change color order to, you know, let me just cycle a nice color, maybe something like, uh, like this. Let's click OK and I'll hit escape to exit out of the symbol. And you can see all my instances also follow along. So this is a very procedural way of working. So make all the icons you design into the symbol. And next thing we want to do is to create an artboard that is 5,000 pixel by 5,000 pixel with a rectangle in the middle, as you can see over here. Uh, it's full HD, 1920 by 1080, and this will serve as our active area. So we're basically making this, uh, this larger rings that will scale down into our full HD com in After Effects. Also, create a circle about 2500 pixel that will be our guide to where we can arrange our icons. And my workflow is very simple. First, even like I said, there's four configuration patterns, right? There's the square, there's the pair, and there's a diamond and there's a rectangle. And instead of arranging them, oops, arranging, arranging them manually, what you want to do is, let's see, first of all, let me just delete all of this. I'm going to just kind of start from scratch. You want to build the template. So I created a, sim a symbol, right? That is just a red dot, 200 pixel. And what I do, I will scale it up to about 600 pixel. So if you go to transform over here, you can you know, specify the size, about 600 pixel. <clears throat> you might want to scale it down uh, depending on the type of icon that you use. So I'm going to hold Option click on the symbol and then go downwards, drag it downwards and make sure you hold Shift as well. And this will duplicate it. I'm going to uh, select both of my symbols, press R, double click on it, type in 90 degree and then click Copy. So. So this is one template and then I can, I can easily just later replace it like that. Replace it with any symbols that I want. So we can rename this uh, template, uh, let's call it uh, square, right? So you want to just build all your template. I'm going to change it back to red and I'm going to create uh, my, rename this to rectangle, rename this to diamond and then we'll name one to pair. So the pair one is the easiest. So what I want to, I'm going to copy, copy, actually, I'll just copy this two symbols over here and paste it into the pair. So command F will paste it in place. Oh, looks like I didn't paste it properly. You're just going to turn off, turn it off and just select the pair layer and command F 
and this will paste it in place. Okay, so we're done with two configuration. And then now for the diamond, well, and then same thing, I'm going to hit Command F uh, with my diamond layer selected. And I'm going to rotate it as well. I, I could have copied the square one. So I'm going to rotate it and copy it. And then I can just, you know, space it out. I can space it out like that first. And then select both of them, Command G to group it. And using my align panel, I can just center it in the middle. So I have like this like diamond uh, configuration. And maybe you want to put it closer to the circle. It's up to you. And for the last one, let's do our rectangle. So let's uh, select our rectangle layer and paste it in place. And it's very simple. All we need to do is just hold option and then click and drag to the side. And then let's select both of these. Command G to group it and align it in the middle. And we're just going to delete this symbol at the bottom. And we're going to drag it down as well. And because we're very, let's be very nitpicky, we want to be aligned in the center. Select both of uh, the set of circles. Command G to group it again and align in the center horizontally and vertically. And I like, I would just uh, ungroup it by Command Shift G. And so we have all our four symbols. And you can see. So our four symbols. Probably shouldn't turn off the background. Yes, we have four symbols. We have our square, we have our rectangle, we have our diamond, and our pair. So let me turn off my guides again. So now you can just duplicate, you can just duplicate all this uh, this template by clicking the clicking and dragging the layers into this uh, create new layer icon, and we you can start off with the square and just select all of this and maybe. The first symbol, uh, I believe, was is this uh, is this solid over here, and then you can turn it off and then go for the. I think the next one was a pair, and you can select the pair and just replace it with this uh, this arrow over here. And you might have to do some rotation; it's not perfect, so you want to just rotate it. And sometimes you might just want to size it up, size it up a little bit bigger. So maybe you want to do like 500 pixel uh, and you you have to do it for the bottom as well. Of course, you can always go into the symbol and resize it there and it will change accordingly. So there are many options available. And you know, same thing, rectangle, you can just select the symbol and change them. So maybe I'm just going to do one side is this coin, uh, pink coin, and the other side will be my yellow coin. So. A procedure workflow this is going to be very helpful for us so what you want to do is duplicate uh, all the template for enough for your icons to create the rings and then you want to have I have about 16 rings as you can see previously so I'm gonna leave it up to you to design your own rings last of all ensure that your rings are in individual layer and the artboard with the rings is the last one in the artboard panel because After Effects does not import all the artboards. So over here, you can see my artboard 1 is the icon as you can see above. And then my artboard 2 is this uh, layers of rings. Now in After Effects, let's import our AI file as a composition. Let's hit Command I to import our demo AI file. Ensure that Create Composition is selected. Click Open and Footage Dimension Layer Size. Click OK. And let's click on the demo composition and you notice that where's our icons and that's because our com has been resized to full hd we want it to be our original size of 5000 by 5000 so let's hit that and click ok and i'm going to zoom out as you can see we have all the rings and i don't need the background layer so i can actually just hide it and i don't need the temp i have a te other layers uh, so i can just remove that i just want my rings Okay, and first of all, we want to the, the order is in, inverted. You can see this is supposed to be the first uh, icon or ring that's supposed to, to appear. So I'm going to just select my icon one and then shift select up to my first layer, command X and command V to reverse the layer order. So, you know, as you can see, my layer, my, my layer one is, is the first ring. I want to be in sequence and we want to press S to bring up the scale and we're going to click on the stopwatch and set from 100 
to, to about 22 frames. So let's set it 20, about 22 frames to be about zero. And let's actually just scale down the composition uh, duration. So we want to make it about four seconds long. So press N here and command shift X to trim comp to work area. And then next, what we want to do is just adjust. Oh, we, act we actually need our guy. So let's keep that in. We will need, we need to know when we need uh, how much to scale. So uh, one thing we can do is select our background and go to help. And then we can type in guide layer. I think on uh, you can only do this on Mac and uh, for Windows user, go to layer, guide layer. So making a guide layer, even though it appears here, it won't show up in the composition uh, when it's nested in a composition. It won't be rendered. So uh, lucky us. So like I say, we want to, we so what we're animating, let's solo this. Uh, let's solo layer one and our guide layer. We want it to be, we want, we, we, we want layer 1 to scale down into the middle like this but uh, we want it to be at its we want it when it's in the active area it needs to be a little bit slower so we can go in, let's select it and just let's just put uh, easy ease for now easy ease in and then we can just open up the graph editor let me just pull it up so as in an active area I want it to kind of stay as big as possible so you can just adjust it so like that adjust adjust the slope so that it stay as long as 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 long as it can and you can do the fine tweaking on your own and i'm just going to move on so now we're going to make use of the value at time expression that we learned previous in our, my previous tutorial you want to option click on the stopwatch and then pick with layer one scale that's animated and you want to type value at time parentheses and you can type time minus endpoint so previously we used a slider to offset it but this time we're gonna you know change it differently we're gonna mute basically what time minus endpoint means that it will play wherever it will start it will kind of adopt the animation property at its endpoint so as you can see if i were to play let me turn down to quarter re resolution as you can see the shape my first shape animates like that and you can see my second my second layer also animates in the same same speed as the first as the first layer and i'm going to copy this this scale expression and just paste it onto my other rings so i can now let me just turn them on so now i can just offset them like this so it's going to appear right so we have all the rings at the start and I can just offset them like this. So if I were to play it, I think I still have one layer solo. So if I were to play it, you can see, yes, there's some, we can stagger it manually. And just to get, maybe we want to have like two, we want to have like two rings animating at, animating at the same speed, same, uh, just but at different rotation. So play around with the timing just by dragging by dragging the layers. So I'm just gonna stagger it manually for now. And so this is this will take some time. It took me one hour to get the timing right. So be patient. And let's just play it and see what happens. So you can see everything is scaled down. It looks really fun. That's really cool. And so yeah, you might so you need to do a lot of fine tweaking like I like I mentioned. So maybe you just you need to grab some of them and just push them apart. So it doesn't look so cluttered. All right. And then you also need to, you know, press R on the end layer. And then you just got to like rotate it. So it doesn't look all so linear. So let's say for, for this for layer four, which is the coin and the triangles. Yeah, you might. Yeah, this is fine. You can just offset it so it doesn't look so uniform. So you can rotate it and just make sure that all your icons are with uh, at when it starts. It's uh, it's not within the active area because if we because when we we comp composite this, we are definitely gonna see this uh, popping out of the edges, and we don't want that. If something like this this happened, you can either modify it in Illustrator or you can just you know option click on stopwatch and get rid of the expression and put in a keyframe uh, yourself.
Once you're done animating the rings to your timing, you should have something like this. And after this step, let's create a new composition. And let's hit Command N. I'm going to do a full HD com. So HDTV 1920 1080. I'm going to click make it 4 second. And I'm going to click OK. And you should have your render from the part 1 tutorial with this with the spirals, not the spiral, with the wavy pattern background ready. So it's just going to save time if you have it rendered out and so it won't be so slow. And we want to bring in that the rings. So I have it here, right? This is my, my set over here. So you can see it's just scaling in like that. It looks, it's looking kind of boring. But what we're going to do is press R to bring out a rotation. Actually make this green. And we're going to set a keyframe from zero. And then at the end of four seconds, let's make it a full rotation. So we'll just play it and see what happens. And then maybe we want to select the keyframes and then just right click keyframe assistant, easy, easy in. So of course, play around with the speed, the speed graph. It's up to you. And last of all, what we're going to do is to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm just going to name this uh, post time. So I'm going to go to my effects and preset and type in posterize time. So to really get that stylized look, stylized motion, look wrong, posterize time and delete that. Uh, posterize time. Yes. So I'm going to set it to 12 frame. As you can see, just dropping on a posterize time effect really enhances our scene over here. And we are done. As you can see, this scene is indeed complex, but the concepts are simple. When we break it down like that, I like to call this type of work complexity in simplicity. Thank you for watching part 2 of this master study. Please like, share, subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. If you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at DesmondDo because I love to see what you came up with on your own. As mentioned earlier, I'll be going back to school to pursue a master degree so I can become a teacher in the future. Some question I've been asking myself is, will I have less or more time for tutorials? How often should I make a tutorial? And should I maybe get some help? And as I'm leaving my current job at WarnerMedia Studios, I'm considering starting a Patreon to cover some of my living expenses while I'm studying for the next two years. But anyway, everyone has been kind and supportive to me lately and it makes me love teaching even more. I'm definitely motivated to keep doing tutorial for you guys. I also like to mention that this is my 30th tutorial and I've been making one almost every single week since the year began. I'm having a lot of fun and I intend to make even more tutorials in the future. I will be taking a two weeks break just to reflect upon everything and maybe do a vlog. I'll be back with a tutorial on 24 August. I'll be taking a look at Andrew Vaco's film From Nothing to Something and I'm also interested to study other artists like J.R. Canaz and Sander Van, last name I can't pronounce. If you have a suggestion, please leave a comment below. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.